There's been some speculation that Brian Kelly is waiting on NFL coaches to fill out his staff. Um, it's not always the easiest thing to do to get guys released. Okay, If you remember the Ryan Nielsen uh, thing from a year ago when LSU was trying to hire a defensive coordinator, Ryan Nielsen was a defensive line coach at the Saints, was a, a prime target, uh, had a, a personal relationship with Ed Ogeron, and Sean Payton blocked it, and, and Nielsen stayed where he was. Uh, in this case, Mike Tomlin uh, let Adrian Clem go. So, again, it's not always – some coaches will, will block this, some coaches weren't. Uh, Tomlin and, and Peyton handled it uh, a little bit differently. I guess my number one question today, Jeremy, is the news on Brian Kelly broke four weeks ago today. Mm -hmm. So he's been on the job roughly a month, and he's got less, far less than half of his staff – filled out. So my first question is why is this taking so long? And the second question is how bad is this hurt in LSU? My answer, I'll answer my, give you my opinion and then I want yours. I think first of all, that this should have been, should have been done. Okay. Th that most of this legwork should have been done already. That the, the athletic director fired Ed Ogeron in the middle of the season, specifically so LSU could get a, a running start as soon as the season was over, that the new coach would be able to get on the ground and recruit really hard up to the early signing date, put his staff together, and not have to, to, to face a whole lot of delays. In my opinion, none of that has happened. Mm -hmm. in, in the month that they've been here, Brian Kelly did very, very little recruiting. That early signing period, I don't think produced, outside of Miles Frazier, the transfer from Florida International, very – much that would not have been produced with the previous staff. I, I don't. I give Kelly, Kelly a little bit of credit for not losing uh, any of them, but I mean Walker Howard was coming here. Okay, mm -hmm. Will Campbell was coming here unless the new coach came here from Neptune and said we don't want you. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give him a whole lot of credit for going in and, and getting those guys. Those guys were coming here, and I believe the same thing with Quincy Wiggins. Okay, I, I think that. All Wiggins was waiting for was, hey, for the new coach to come in, let me meet him. I get a scholarship offer, and Quincy Wiggins really wanted to. That's my opinion, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know Quincy Wiggins uh, or, or his family or his coach or anything. That was just the impression that I got was he really wanted to come here. So you didn't get a whole lot done in recruiting, okay? It was a, it was a very, very low-key approach to the early signing period. Okay, fine. And now you're, you're a month into this thing, and you still got the majority of your staff is not hired. You're in a dead period in recruiting, which, okay, maybe you're not losing ground out on the road, but I'm going to say this until uh, over and over again, you have to re-recruit your roster every day. And as the team comes back in here to file in for bowl practices, wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if Kayshawn Boutte could walk into the building and meet the new offensive coordinator? Because yeah. I think Boutte's probably getting somewhere in the area of 650 calls a day for him to go somewhere else. And it's a wonderful thing to have the head coach in the building, okay? But wouldn't it be great if he knew who he was going to work with from an OC standpoint and that guy could get in his ear and say, hey, look, man, this is what we're going to do with you. I want to know why this has taken so long, and I want to know your opinion on how badly is this, is this hurting LSU at this point? Oh, um, I don't think I think it's too early to tell right now to say how bad I think after this next signing day, if, if you see LSU around, you know, 13, 14 commits and you really don't sign anyone else and you see some more guys hit this transfer portal, then I think you can start pulling the, the hell, uh, hellfire and brimstone out for that. But I think for me, I kind of think right now the reason why and I don't know if that came from the higher ups. I don't know if it came from Rich Osbury and the crew, but. I think we saw Coach O kind of make some of those hires just really quick. Hey, we need a you know a, a Joe Brady project. Who who's the closest thing that? Okay, Pete, all right, come on over. Like we, we need this guy, we need this guy, and you just bring him over. I think uh, for Coach Kelly, maybe he's going the opposite approach. Let's really do our due diligence. Let's really you know really s survey this coaching landscape, and maybe some of these guys are still coaching. Maybe some of these guys are are in a college football player. Maybe some of these guys are in the NFL. Um, let's take our time with this. I, I think I heard Lane Kiffin say this. Um, there's like they asked him, uh, what was the biggest thing you learned from Coach Saban during your time at Alabama? And he said, patience, um, taking my time and stuff, not rushing, not, 
um, doing things, you know, uh, out of emotion or out of thinking that I don't have time to do stuff. I'm hoping as a LSU got my LSU bifocals on right now, looking through those lenses. Um, I'm hoping that's what's going on. But I, I think if you want to look at the adverse uh, point of that, um, it is alarming. It is uh, worrisome. I, I think you've seen guys already hit the portal. You've seen the Kayshawn Butte rumors. Um, I think you want to have this thing done a lot sooner than later. I, I think we've been talking about that for weeks on end, it feels like now, and it hasn't been done for whatever reason. But I'm going to continue to trust Coach Kelly. Um, you don't become the all-time winningest coach at Notre Dame if you don't hire the right people on your staff. Um, sometimes that takes a little longer, especially right now when – like you said, you, you did this move, especially in the middle of the season, to have that done. It's not done, but it's not over yet. I'm, I'm going to give it some time before I really kind of start really, really worrying about this whole thing. There is a, a, a blind trust here in Kelly that he is behind the scenes because he has not been public with very much of anything, that he knows what he's doing. He's done this three times before. He's done this at big-time programs. He is as qualified as anybody to to handle this but I, I really have to ask what what's taken so long I, I understand due due diligence but the reason that Brian Kelly was hired and the reason that he is being paid the amount of money he is being paid is because he has a unique perspective on college football the entire landscape recruiting staffing schematics the whole deal he, he is the most qualified person literally that they could have hired and I'd, I'd just like to know why, why there are this many empty chairs on the coaching staff. There's not Because the empty chairs do you no good. I'm not saying it's anything he can't overcome. And I certainly want him to hire people that he's comfortable with. But you've got the budget. You've got open spots. You have the knowledge of the entire landscape. Um, I, I have a, I've, I've been going on the assumption that he's waiting for somebody that's either in the playoffs or in the NFL. Um, for his coordinator spots. Mm -hmm. That doesn't answer the, 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 the rest of the questions. So I'm going to continue to, to trust that he knows what he's doing. He's, he's qualified to do this, but I, I can't think of a really, really good reason to have this many <laughs> empty seats on the coaching staff a month after the head coach has been fired. Uh, it's been yeah. it's been hired. Excuse yeah. me. It, it's alarming. It's alarming. And I think for me, I think there has been guys that have turned down turned down the job. I'm pretty sure Marcus Freeman turned down the job. Down. I'm pretty sure Tommy Reese turned this job. No, down. There, there's reasons for that though. I, I, that part I completely get. I I put I, I don't put a whole lot of stock into the well, man. Only one or two guys followed him from Notre Dame, so it must be no. Marcus Freeman got a head coaching job instead of a coordinator's job. Tommy Reese is a Notre Dame lifer. Okay. He, he grew up north of Chicago. He went to school there. He's been an assistant coach there. He's, he's got a very good job there. Why would, you know, why would he want to move from his home, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I get that. So I'm not, I'm not blaming him for the, the, the Notre Dame guys not coming here. I'm concerned that there's nobody there, period. Uh, yeah. I, I used to say this a lot when Trent Johnson was a basketball coach because he simply refused to recruit. And he was say, well, we only need, you know, six or eight guys you know we don't we don't need to use all the scholarships which I thought was crazy <laughs> because those folding chairs at the end of the bench ain't helped you win game one and I kind of feel the same way right now it's like listen I understand you're not in a full-fledged recruiting period right now and the game next week whatever all right but man every day that you got empty chairs in that building that that's a that's another guy that you could bring into your organization I'm talking about high qualified football coaches which is what I think he will hire that could be helping you establish your culture could be helping you you know plan for recruiting plan for spring football the, the empty chairs don't do any of that for yeah. you so i guess my deal is uh i'll trust uh because of his track record but man it's 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 unsettling to yeah. see this amount of time pass and you yeah. say well oregon wanted their offensive line coach well they went to the nfl and got him they didn't wait for the end of the season i don't know if steel is going to make the playoffs or not they didn't wait they went, they went and got their guy, so that guy can can start working. And, again, it's not a death knell, all right? I, I, I understand that you can have this this period where the, the coach is not uh, is not in place. Uh, you know, when Bo Pelini, for instance, went to Nebraska, he stayed on with LSU through the national championship game, and, you know, turns out that they, they were just fine. So this is probably all going to be just fine. This is probably <laughs> just me whining a little bit. But, man, I, I looked at the calendar today. I was like, yeah, it's a month ago. And – there's a lot of empty chairs over there. It's time to start filling them.
yeah. pastime, in my my opinion. Yeah, Hunt and I talked about it. That was on both of our Christmas list <laughs> wish lists, uh, we should say, uh, before you know Christmas rolled around, was that we need an OC in the DC at least at the bare minimum. And then kind of when you get those guys in, you can fit guys on the rest of the staff that fit. You know what they want to do as coordinators. Just hasn't happened, man. I think we, we kind of heard some rumors about Brad White at Kentucky. We don't know what happened after that. We I thought he'd be announced pretty soon, and that didn't come to fruition. And then offense coordinator, I have no idea, no earthly idea where he's going to go with that. Um, I really don't know. Just the offense that he ran, you watched them run. They run a lot of two tight end sets. They, they want to run the ball first. Um, I don't really know where you point to. I think the way college football is going, there's a lot of RPO guys. There's a lot of you know spread guys, a lot of air raid guys out there. That's not what Chip Kelly wants to do. I know that's what the young high school kids love, but I don't know where he's going with this. I, I'm not worried yet because I trust him as a coach. I trust what he's done. I trust his track record. But if he doesn't get this thing done pretty soon here, it, it's going to really hurt you, especially this recruiting class. Because I know, especially in Tigertown, you, you start this season off, you mess around, lose to Florida State, and mess around, start this season not the way you want to start it. it it's going to be it's going to be a bad scene. So I, I think getting the coordinator is definitely – Soothes those sorrows for me, for sure. The other thing is that I expect that they will attack the transfer portal very, very hard. You know, they've already gotten one offensive lineman, and I suspect that they'll go after at least one or two more. And that's just at that position. Well, when your staff comes in, they've built in relationships with players from all over. Mm -hmm. Players that they recruited that they got, players that they recruited that they didn't have, but that they maintained relationships with. Um, if you're going to attack the transfer portal that hard, which I suspect that they're going to do, um, I'd like to have the personnel in place to to do that. 